Hello and welcome to Season 3, Episode 4 of the Raider Power Podcast. I'm Ryan and with me as always is my man Moss and our boy Evan. How are we doing today, fellas? I am doing fantastic. Welcome to the very first live video recording of uh, our podcast. Evan, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, man. And what better time? The gang's all back. The gang's back together. The boys are back in town. The first episode with all three of us on this season, uh, you got to love it. And you know what? I think I'm just going to go out and crack a cold one to start us off there, boys. Mm. Ready for this? That's delicious <laughs> you got right there. Yeah, Coors Light. You know? <laughs> but as always, we're sponsored by Make Life Dandy. Stop and sip the flowers, you know. That uh, three-hour time difference really helps you out a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Oh, boy. So uh, before we get started, I want Evan to address something, um, you know, to all of our listeners out there. His unbearing love for one coach of uh, (laughs) the West Virginia Mountaineers. Is he the current coach, Evan, or former coach? Here's the deal. I'm entitled to mistakes. Come on. Everyone knows. I'm human. Okay, come on. I don't know. About the fact that Dana was fired from West Virginia. Is that Dana? Was coming, trying to come to Texas Tech. Mm -hmm. And I still talked about him as if he was the coach of West Virginia, which is obviously not the case. That coach is Dana. All right. Can we move on from that? I screwed up. All right. West Virginia, why don't we hop into the game? And I'll tell you what, it's Texas Tech's first, uh, what I'm going to call real win. Yeah. Because a two point win against some D1A school doesn't count worth shit. So, facts. Tech gets their first win behind starting quarterback Henry Colombi, mm. the guy from Utah State, Wells boy. Yep. How do we feel about that, fellas? So, Ryan, I honestly would rather have you kind of talk a little bit more about this because yeah. when you texted me saying, like, Matt Wells and Yost conspired against Alan Bowman, yeah. calling a bad game against Iowa State so that Henry Colombi would become the starting QB. I, I don't I didn't really know where you were going with that. I, honestly, what I was thinking is Wells comes in to this program. He has yeah. all of his guys, his new guys, and he inherits Texas Tech's starting quarterback, Bowman. Bowman, very talented, yes. obviously, has his problems with injury. Kind of a cocky fuck, but I like him. Mm. And I don't know if he fits Wells' offense. And because of that, I think Wells, from the jump, probably wanted the kid who was willing to transfer schools to follow him. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe they're not calling a game that's perfect for Bowman, or maybe Bowman's playing bad either way. But, I mean, either way, Wells gets to start his guy, and we see a completely different-looking quarterback. I mean, he's nothing compared, nothing similar to Bowman in my mind. He's like a more of a game manager where he can run on his feet, whereas Bowman's got the big arm and he's always trying to throw it. I just think we saw a completely different offense this week. And I, I agree 100%, don't get me wrong, but I think that it's lunacy to think that Wells would in any way call a game that would jeopardize the possibility of a win. Lunacy! Because, ah. because be that, I mean, he's he is on the hot seat. If he was to If he was to finish this season without another win, I mean, you could say that his job wouldn't be in jeopardy because of COVID, but I disagree. Yeah. If you finished... With zero Big 12 wins, um, there's, there is a high chance that his job would be in jeopardy. So I don't but think, the, the thing I don't is think like, that he were they would have called beat... something that would jeopardize a, a shot at a game. But did they have a shot against Iowa State to begin with? Sure. If yeah, they didn't, I, I think yeah, so. Absolutely they Especially did. Iowa after State's the, a good team. Yeah, but after the first eight minutes, you know, Tech was up 7 nothing. Hey, maybe I am a lunatic. Maybe I just like my boy Bowman, but I just didn't like Wells benching him and putting in some dude named Henry Columbia. Well, let me put it this way. Who would have thought we had a shot against the University of Texas? You know what I mean? Was Bowman healthy? Is Bowman healthy? Yeah, he is healthy. He's healthy. He was benched. Is he a hundred percent? Is he a hundred percent healthy? Has he no, ever he, been a hundred percent healthy? I, I don't no. I want to make a little point here. I don't think he's the same quarterback that he was, you know, when he was a freshman coming in. Yep. After, I mean, I feel like his injuries five touchdowns against Texas and got 56 points on the board. I feel like that Bowman has been injured several times in a row and now does not play with the same aggressiveness as he did when uh, to previous to the injuries. I feel like he 
He's nervous or scared. Well, I mean, exactly. aggressiveness. He's a pocket passer. It's not like he was ever running all over the field. He was running all over the field. He was. No. That's how he got injured. He was. I mean, he got injured getting drilled from sitting in the pocket. No, I'm but, talking about his previous injuries were his against the game against Oklahoma when he yeah he got to drilled run sitting in the pocket. That no. was his first time he got hit, and then he came back in that got hit again. When Gentlemen. he was diving for Gentlemen. the pylon, he got cracked in the wrist. The second time he got hit. That Listen, was the second time? Right. Pile drived at the end of the first half. So, okay, uh, so me... is it now big facts time with Ryan since uh, Dana over well, he here, we can't, we can't trust him with the big All facts right. anymore? Let fake fake news with Evan. Here. Let me finish my thought. <laughs> he is not healthy mentally. Ever since oh, he yeah. got injured. That's, that's an attack on his personal character. No, no, listen. I mean that in the fact that he plays – Scared, absolutely terrified. Thank and you. We didn't, and we didn't see that out of him. You know, his first call it four games his freshman year, and I think to an extent. Thank you. I think to an extent this year you still saw him play aggressive. Call it University of Te- against University of Texas, but you know when you blow a lead like that, whenever you're flashed across all of social media, flashing the horns down with three minutes to go, you're the laughing stock of college football, like. That does nothing but even further hinder your confidence. Bowman is playing scared. He's healthy physically to an extent. He has some outstanding, you know, issues from his previous injury, but he is not healthy from the from the standpoint of being mentally confident. All right, uh, I feel like he's more careless than less than not confident. I feel like he's a lot of times he's careless with the ball. That's fair, but I also think he's the most talented quarterback on the roster. Okay, well, Ryan, well, I don't know. I want to see Maverick play. But when when we were playing Texas, um, as soon as we got a turnover, you know, he basically he threw two picks, two easy picks okay. right after. You can turn. be careless. No, no, no. That. What I'm gonna what I was gonna say is, in the games after that, we didn't really see him take, long, especially against Iowa State. It was so many just check down passes. I feel like he's just lost a little confidence in his throwing ability. Which I don't. Which he has so much. His ceiling is way yeah. up there. It's way up there. He's got a great arm. His release is super fast. I just don't think he. I just don't think he's physical enough for for Big Twelve football. So let me ask you this, Ryan. Yeah. Was it the correct? Was it the correct call to bench Bowman? Here's the thing. I mean, they we won't know. Yeah, we don't know. We won't. But like, is Bowman ever going to be able to play? for Texas Tech again. It's, he's done for the season, and next year, you know, if the young guys come up, you have, like, Maverick coming up, and Bowman will have already been benched the year before. Well, it's clearly doesn't have confidence in him. Bowman might be done. We might never see him play quarterback for Texas Tech again. I would guess he's transferring next year. I don't have confidence in him right now. I'm sorry to say, but I really don't. I mean, I, I it comes to... I just look at, like, when he puts up the big numbers. He has that ability, and I just don't like seeing that wasted on a roster with the receivers we have. When you put in Columbia, Columbia throws for like 160 yards in the game or something like that. Yeah, like, they're dude, just not throwing downfield. I, I want to see Texas Tech football. I don't want to see Matt Wells football. I'm sorry. But maybe, it, maybe it's time to implement some other aspects aside from just the air raid. Look at what... Excuse uh, look, me? Look at me. Look at what the... the the ability to be mobile did for us. It completely changed the offensive game. It completely changed the scheme. It completely changed our ability to compete with West Virginia, in my opinion. Yep. Yeah, no, Columbia, Columbia's on the ground was great. I mean, if you look at it, though, he had 40 yards rushing, 11 attempts, like a little over three yards of carry, or three whatever a carry. Like, it was very useful. He got a couple of big first downs. He got the touchdown, absolutely. Being mobile in the pocket is definitely something we need this year with such a bad offensive line when, you know, in reality, they're getting pressure constantly. So Columbia being able to move around helps a ton. Um, but, I mean, I just want to see – I want to see a long ball. I do, I too. See it. I do, too. Don't get me wrong. It's just another element that the other team has to scheme for, right? Yeah. I mean, so, but I would say that it takes away an element they have to scheme for, which is deep – passes so the one thing that i will say is that i think david yost is much more comfortable calling a game plan with a mobile quarterback i feel like that's what he wants to do and i feel like i feel like you know bowman just didn't give him the opportunity i don't think it's a bowman issue i think it's more of a coaching issue and the kind of game plan that yost wants to script for yeah but also i would like to point this out too but like if cliff was the coach that game i don't think henry columbia won that game i think that the defense 
the special teams, and more so than anything, the running backs won that game. If Cliff was coaching with Bowman, I think we would see a completely different quarterback. Yeah, 100%. Because Wells, you're right. Wells and Yost is just isn't their offense. Their offense definitely is better suited for Henry Columbia. I will definitely say that and agree with you on that. Yeah. Well, I mean, Cliff is just a much better offensive coach than either yeah. of them combined. Yeah, I okay. can't disagree with you there. Do you think oh, that Evan do you think wow. Cliff? Okay. we wow. can have a whole Shocking. segment on Cliff if you want? What's I'll, 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 I'll pencil that in for the end. What are the Cardinals? Uh, rank, uh, what's their record right now? Uh, it's five, because Cliff six, has every five, talent in the world. Uh-huh. You give him the talent, he can coach. Mm-hmm. If he can't recruit, mm-hmm. get the talent to Lubbock, he can't get it done. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you, got home, so to say, you got Mahomes. Do, do you think that Yost? Like five receivers in the NFL. Do you think that Yost goes to bed and just dreams of screens? I think Yost drinks a Dr. Pepper and eats a bag of Skittles and then just can't sleep and plays Mario Kart until like five in the morning. <laughs> Watches Dumb and Dumber, dyes his hair, puts on his Oakleys, and just rips Mario Kart. <laughs> chugs the leader of Dr. Pepper. There's a there's a chance that he doesn't know that you can call plays that aren't screens. There is a chance I have come to believe. I feel if like third Yost... eleven, I think that everything in his mind just starts ripping out screens, screens, <laughs> screens. I feel like Yost tries to go to bed and then constantly checks his My, MySpace page to see if he has any friends invites, and then just doesn't realize that no one's on MySpace anymore. <laughs> uh, Yost is a character. Um, I like Yost. I've, I mean, I've I said I, I like too. Yost. I like but... Patterson as well. The only guy that I don't like is but... at the Helms. Matt Wells. Yeah. I don't like him. I mean, I like Keith Harrison, absolutely. And speaking of defense, why don't we talk about that a little bit? Because obviously the scoop and score yep. on the game. But Again. beyond that, the linebackers were all over the field. I feel like the defense played very well. Yeah, I think that we're seeing Rico Jeffers really fill in for the Jordan Brooks type yep. uh, player that, that we had last year. And Patterson I think that, was uh, saying that at, at the beginning of the year, that yeah. Rico has really evolved. Yeah, you'll see him, in my opinion, throughout the season continue to be the heart and soul of that defensive squad, uh, as you saw against West Virginia. What, uh, Rico played one heck of a game. And thankfully, the targeting call um, was mm-hmm. in the first half you know, um, of the previous game so that he was able to play. You know what? I'm going to uh, bring up one thing real quick on, uh, on defense. Is that – did you all know that West Virginia statistically had the best defense in – all of college football before that game. Mm-hmm. I did Number know one. that. So that yeah. might be a credit, more credit due to Columbia than what we were uh, I'll tell you throwing what. at him. That is a tall task to be given in your first start with the team. Go up against the number one statistic t- defense in the country. And he managed the game very well. Don't yes. get me wrong. He managed yeah. the game well. It's just not what we're used to and not what I love. But if it wins us games, hey, I'm here for it. I, I think that I think that Columbia won the game for us for one simple reason. Um, and it's it's how he executed. He had every reason in the world, every excuse in the world to not perform well in this game. It's his first college start. It's his first start since state of like, I think 2017 in high school. He played without his top two receivers. He played without Vasher and he pay, played without Kishon Carter. He, I mean, I was really nervous about him getting the start, and he went out there and he executed the game plan to dang near perfection. That's fair. I mean, like I said, he's a he's great, great game manager. And yeah. in college football, you know, if that's going to win games, sure, keep letting him start. Um, he didn't put up the sure. massive numbers that we're used to seeing out of Texas Tech quarterbacks, but he did his job. He, he did. did it well. He yeah. did. And hats, hats off to Henry Columbia, all right? This is Matt Wells' second win against a team with a winning record since he's been at Texas Tech. Wow. And it came against the best defense in the country, statistically. Um, and on top of that, I mean, obviously they weren't looking too good in the, in the beginning of the year, so right. Columbia might have been Columbia might have been what was needed. I'll, you know what, I will, I'll say that. I'll say that right now. <laughs> so what do you guys think about the coaching decisions? Do you think Matt Wells called a good game? Do you think those fourth down, to go on, go for it on fourth down, what what he go for three times? You know, was that the smart decision? I thought the fourth and eleven call was highly questionable. Yeah, it worked out for us. I it totally agree. Us. Um, <laughs> so no harm, no foul. But if that would have backfired, I would have been uh, I would have been gunning for him. You know, like that was a very questionable call. Although 
what is going on with our kicking game? Matt Wells Frank- has no faith in our kicking at yep. all. And I'm pretty sure that his, you know, th- I've talked about this before. He he does never he never takes responsibilities for the negative things that happen in games and he blames players and we had Dom on mm-hmm. right who said that yeah. Matt Wells does not does not, not like coach. the special the special teams yeah he's got Actually, like an Dom, issue he did straight up say that he said when he was there it was clearly an issue yeah um, I don't get it I, I mean like you said if fourth like going on fourth down works it's always a good call. And I love doing it when it's like fourth and five or less, but fourth and eleven is kind of whatever. Uh, I, I the play calling I thought was really smart was the end of the game mm-hmm. when they just ran the ball seven straight times, yep, and were able to really get that clock down and then let our boy send up another boom with his leg. Oh the my best god! Punter in the Big Twelve, one of the best con- punters in the country. I think. Who, they by said... the way, McNamara set. A school record with did the length he, of one of his putts, eighty-seven but, yards. But did he yes, did he set a national record? I heard them talk. I've heard the commentators talking about it. No, I looked that up, Chris. There was a punter back in the nineteen fifties that 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 uh, booted a punt for ninety-five plus yards. Did he also play for Dana? <laughs> but, I mean, McNamara Are we not only had that. Pass that anytime soon. I don't McNamara think so. Not only had that eighty-seven yarder, he also had a seventy-four yarder. Yep. Oh, like, yeah. Like, you got it. This kid is the best player on the team. I mean, yeah. even with the wind, like, that is absolutely ridiculous. It's insane. He he straight up punted that ball end zone to end zone. Like, I mean, I th- he's like the best player on the team. Last year he was unbelievable. This year he's unbelievable. I mean, the might, Raider Power Punting Podcast. Uh, we're here for special teams. We love field position, baby. RPPP. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I mean,. I good think game, guys. Good play calling. I mean, better than other games we've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you said, Evan, the execution was definitely high. Uh, defense made plays when they needed to. Linebacking core was flying around. That uh, what's his name? Schooler, the transfer yep. from Arizona. He yeah. played a hell of a game. Made that he stripped the ball for that last uh, scoop and score. Yep. I mean, definitely a lot of positives to come out of this. Obviously, a couple injuries to the running backs. Hopefully, Thompson's back. And Xavier uh, White. Week. And Xavier White, but the the freshman, the true freshman, Brooks, he had himself a little bit of a day once they started relying on him. Yeah, mm-hmm. Taj Brooks showed up. And how about other true oh. freshman, Miles Price, oh, receiver? Price. He had a heck of a game. Yes, you know, he did. What things we might him. just be looking up, but speaking to come, next Where on is, the docket. Wait, hold up. Where is TJ Vasher? I'm going to guess it's another disciplinary issue. There's no way he's hurt. Uh, he put up an Instagram yesterday, so he's still there. I was watching his <laughs> Instagram story when they were playing. He was just Instagramming it saying, oh, great play, guys, great play, guys, blah, blah, blah. So he, so he was he was just chilling on the couch. I wonder if he got COVID. That's what I was thinking. Maybe he was COVID. Maybe. But I would I – would, if history is any teacher, I bet it's disciplinary issues. But wouldn't you think if he got another disciplinary issue, like That'd he'd be, be done, they'd say something? No, I, I don't think so because of his raw talent. I think Matt yeah. Wells is not put up with that. I think Matt Wells kicks him off the team if it was. Although our boy, uh, the street racer, he's on the team. <laughs> Sir Roger. Yeah. yeah, he didn't get nothing. He didn't even get a slap on the wrist. <laughs> I mean, would he though? I mean, look at look at. Uh, it wasn't a big deal. Look at Jared Duffy. Title Nine allegations. He still was. He still was around. Duffy? No, I'm just saying. If Wells really like wasn't about any bullshit, yeah. then he probably would have done something. Okay, right? du- that happened under Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah, well, he still he still shouldn't be there, in my opinion. Shouldn't have been playing ball at the university. Every, but I don't everyone, really know. I don't really know what happened with him. I don't really understand. I didn't really understand the was, entire situation. Yeah. Was it only Alec? Actually, let's not get into that. Yeah, we don't need to that, he doesn't Duffy. even play there anymore. Jet Duffy wasn't even good. Jet Duffy sucked. <laughs> That's very true. He was so Jet bad. Duffy, I hope you're not listening to this podcast. He's not listening, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so talk about Jet Duffy. keeping the momentum rolling, this Saturday, Halloween, mm-hmm. we got the Sooners, the 24th ranked team in the country, coming mm-hmm. in to the Jones, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we the mm-hmm. their biggest weapon obviously is Spencer Rattler, um, you know, five star QB. But I'll tell you what, he sure hadn't lived up to the hype yet. Mahomes, many. Um, 
the the one thing I'll say about Rattler though is you know after he got benched for that one series in the Texas game, yeah. Ever since then, I don't know if it humbled him or what, but ever since then he has been really good. The past mm-hmm, couple yeah. weeks, Rattler has looked like what he was spoken to be. The beginning of the season definitely was a little bit of a rougher start. And something that I'm a little bit worried about is three of their players that were on suspension to begin the year, one of their best receivers, running backs, and DNs are all slated to come back for this game. Mm. Mm. He's just getting more weapons around him. Fellas, I, uh, I'm i sorry to do this. But before we dive into Oklahoma, i got to go back real quick against West Virginia. How were they able to get that last playoff? I, I, I have no answer. idea. I have Why no idea. Why were they able to get it off? Because because he it had the arm and it it was there. I mean, we were fortunate to come away with it, but that could have gone the other way. I mean, it, not it likely, doesn't make any sense. But it could have. It doesn't How, make any sense. I don't understand, and neither did the announcers. I just thought I would bring it up um, and see see if y'all had any opinion on it I as mean, to how that was legal. College refereeing isn't always the best. That's the best I got because I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. Back to OU. Continue. Um. Well, yeah. So obviously it's going to be a big test. OU is starting to look like what they were supposed to be at the beginning of the season when they were ranked three in the preseason. And, you know, they're getting more weapons around them. And I think the big question is, can the defense step up again and slow down Rattler? Yeah. I mean, you got to. You got a coach for OU coming out for blood. Dana Holgerson coming back to Lubbock. Um, <laughs> Lincoln Riley, um, you know, it's no it's no secret that offensively he's one of the most brilliant coaches in the nation. Not not in just college football, uh, but in football in general. You know, he was in the in the running for um, head coach for the Dallas Cowboys purely based off his offensive mind. So. Um, Texas Tech's defense is going to have a massive task this coming Saturday. And, you know, Lincoln Riley against Texas Tech in particular, Mm. you know, every game he's coming to Lubbock or, you know, we've gone there, he's averaged over 50 points a game against Texas Tech. Mm -hmm. And Oklahoma's won the last eight in a row. So, obviously, you know, Keith Patterson, year two, new look defense. Lots of blitzes. What can he do? What Lots can do? of blitzes. I think it was last year after the Oklahoma game <laughs> that they beat us so bad and so handily that Jalen Hurts posted a video of himself working out after the game, like lifting weights and like running like because he, he was just <laughs> so not tired. So I hope that's not the case this year. Obviously, we're not Me as well. Jalen. But I think the most important thing in this fight. game is that everyone comes back healthy. And I and I hopefully we can establish. You know, I think it kind of kind of like goes back to what I was saying about time of possession. We really, mm-hmm. I think with Columbia, um, they're going to do a better job at controlling the clock. And I, I'm, I'm just hoping that Xavier Wright and Thompson are back healthy for this game. I feel like yep. Sir Roderick is questionable. I feel like he had a, a rib injury during the West Virginia game. But if we can control the clock and really run it down Oklahoma's throats. Then uh, we take Rattler off the field for a little bit. I think we could stay in this one. Yeah, hundred percent. It's time of possession and it's field position. If you can manage the game well again, execute again, keep their offense off the field as much as possible. Punt it. You know, I guess yards. focus on that. And then if you need to punt it, fucking pin them in. But in, but uh, but inside the ten, like uh, McNamara is bound to do. Yeah. Then that gives you a lot better chance against this high-powered offense. Yeah, and the other thing, in my opinion. Uh, Expect, not expect, but uh, don't rule out the possibility of seeing two QBs in this game. You know, I think Columbia will get the start, but if, if that offensive Ooh. scheme isn't working and, and, and they're not able to get it done with Columbia, I think that Bowman has a good chance to get put in that game. Are you happy about that or what? I, I don't care. Hmm. I, I want, I want what's best for the team and what gives us the best chance, you know, I feel bad for Bowman, but I don't mm-hmm. feel bad enough to say, oh, I hope he gets the start, or I hope he gets to play. I well, want to win. I will say Bowman Bowman steps up for Oklahoma. We've seen mm-hmm. him do it before. So yeah. if he Big does. Big games in general against yeah. Texas. So see the possi- just get ready for the possibility is all I'm saying. Hey, I would. I don't know if Yost is creative enough. Maybe on those late-night Dr. Pepper sessions he can dream <laughs> something up, but maybe throw out a little – confusing trick plays a little two qb action and 
Uh, yep. You know, like you see the Saints sometimes do with Taysom Hill and Drew right. Brees. You know, get Bowman on the field at the same time. Maybe a little gabagool, a little deep pass. You mm. never know. Yeah, but Taysom Love Hill it. is a tough guy, and Bowman is made out of uh, paper shards and well, glass. Well, no. In, in my analogy, Taysom Hill is Drew Brees. I mean, Bowman is Drew Brees. <laughs> Columbia is Taysom Hill. <laughs> All right, That's not and, I'm, and I'm Maverick, and you're and goose. I'm Chris Moss, and you're, and you're, and, and you're goose, you're goose. Uh, but do we think we have a chance? Absolutely. The overall question. I think Absolutely. that win was so big for the program, man. Just just from a uh, positivity standpoint, I think there needed something to be happy about and excited about with Texas Tech football. We're we're not in last place in the Big Twelve, boys. We're not. <laughs> Here's all I'm saying, man. College football is wild. I mean, look at look no further than week one. Iowa State supposed to be this powerhouse loses to Louisiana Lafayette. You have Kansas State, who's now on fire, losing to who was it? Arkansas, Arkansas State, I think. I mean, yeah. Kansas State. It's it it's college football. Anything can happen. Of course, we have a chance. Oklahoma yeah, State. Yeah. Okay. Looks okay. Let's good, not eh? talk about the the gigantic upsets of teams like UL Lafayette and Arkansas State and anything can happen. A realistic, do you think they hang in this game and are in it down the wire? Oof. Yes. I, if we I run the ball, if we run the ball and control possession, we're in it. If they can keep this under a total point spread of 50 points, if it's like 28 to 25, something like that, like we're in this game. I was going to say under 70 points total. That's the problem. If it if it is that high of an over, then I don't think Columbia is going to be able to get it done. Well, I'm looking at last game, 34-27, something similar to that. I, I think, think if it goes this, higher than that, we're not putting up 42 points. I think this game comes down to defense. I think if our defense is able to contain Rattler They're and not. keep us in the game, if they can keep us in the game, then, yeah, we have a chance. I think our offense will pull our weight with, with – uh, what I mean, <laughs> that wasn't the case against Iowa State. Um, but – if, if last game is an indication, we're starting to figure it out a little bit. Hopefully, we get those two receivers back. Um, yeah, I think we have a chance down the stretch. I think, you know, control the clock mm-hmm. and then try to win the field position when you have to punt it. Don't do any stupid fourth down moves. Wells. And on top of that, you go for the big defensive plays. You go for the blitzes. You try to cause some turnovers. Yep. I love I love that type of defense. I think turnovers are um, key if in this you, game. If you let them have long possessions where they just tire out the defense and still get down the field, it's just not going to be good. You know, you know, I, what, I'm, you know just, what I'm excited about, though? We don't have CD about? Lamb to deal with. True. <laughs> That's what I'm excited about. True. <laughs> I just hope Matt Wells allows the special teams unit to come sit down at the dinner table with him instead of kicking them outside <laughs> at the kids' table. You know, allows yeah. them to use the bathroom inside. You know, I'm sick of Matt Wells making the special team sit out in the rain during dinner. I'm just sick of this guy's attitude, man. That inter- that press conference after the Iowa State game really just really annoyed me. I mean, yeah. I mean, totally. For me, it was it was the Texas game when he calls what he calls a sky kick or whatever. Oh, it's ridiculous! And then he blames the kicker. Oh, so, the kid mishit it. That's why we lost. Like, why don't you just kick it out the back of the end zone like a normal fucking person, bud? I know. Like, well, yeah. Don't kick it to the forty yard line. Yeah. I don't know. He's not learning. He's not. He's not learning from his uh, his mistakes. I feel like this guy's ego is is through the roof. Which is well, strange for a man from Utah. <laughs> I think. He's I think got his, chance. he's got a chance this weekend to prove himself. I yeah. have said this before. I feel like that he demands respect in the Big Twelve, and he's just not getting it. And I think he's like he's got like this small man syndrome where he he's just like he demands the respect that he just that hasn't earned. And then when he's confronted with t- tough questions. He just, you know, comes back compatibly, and yeah, he, I don't like him. I don't no, like Matt I, I don't. I, I don't. I don't like trust Mac Wells, players, and I don't really respect Matt Wells. Like, you don't. You don't blame college players for mistakes. Like I really, especially in a press conference, that I really don't like. But hey, if he can show us something and maybe earn a little respect, you know, I'm willing to give it to him if he can earn it. Yeah, show us a win against a ranked team. Never mind, just against a team with a winning record. Mm-hmm. You're yep. second ever. Yeah. So. Show me a big win. I'm with you on on that. I'm with you on that. Well, anything else, boys, or what do you say we wrap this thing up? Well. What other games uh, are going on in the Big 12 this week? That's what I was going to ask. You know, we got Kansas State with West West Virginia. That's going to be But I think that the most interesting one 
is Oklahoma State hosting Texas. Oh, yeah, baby. Oklahoma State's yeah. good this year. Oklahoma State is the Big 12's chance at getting into the college football playoffs. Yeah. That was a great game last week against Iowa State, too. It was. Uh, two really you know, good teams. Two really good teams. I, I mean, still think I still think that Big 12 champion this year is either Iowa State or Oklahoma State. Remains to be seen, but those are I think those are the top yeah. two contenders. I think Oklahoma I mean, State blows Texas out of the water in this one. I think Mike Gundy is just... Is it in Stillwater? Yeah. It is. Okay. They're going to blow him out. I mean, the team is the team is good, uh, kind of all around the ball. Brock Purdy, uh, he didn't do really anything against their defense, and he's a good quarterback. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Oklahoma State, obviously, they can put up points. They have the best running back in the country, Chubba Howard. Well, um, I wouldn't Chubba say Howard. that. I wouldn't say he's the best, but he is. Who would you say is the best? The Clemson running back. Travis Etienne? Yep. I don't know. I'd say them two are... One and two, followed up by uh, Brown from UAB. Mm. He's an absolute beast. Um, but Chubba Howard, I mean, ETN and Hubbard, Howard, Hubbard both average like over nine yards of carry on their career or something crazy yeah. like that. Yeah, he, he, he is absolutely insane. If so, Roger Thompson had so much success against Texas's defense, I feel like Chuba is going to just chew him up. Yeah, I could absolutely see that. I could see Oklahoma State decent win here they're gonna blow them out i think it's gonna be i think it's gonna be 21 plus what happened to texas's back (laughs) haha doesn't seem like they are anymore you really do have to love it they're back to the same spot they were in last year and the year before and the year before before. and the year before before. yep (laughs) they're just waiting for the ghost of vince young to come back the same thing with like philadelphia they're trusting the process you just don't know how long that process is (laughs) There's, right. there's no time stamp on it. It's just That's there's right. just a process, and you just gotta trust it. You gotta trust it. That's the only thing you can do. You know, Texas um, Tech has never said anything about a process. We've had zero process. We don't do processes. <laughs> we don't. There's no processing. Yeah, we just play. We just uh, fire the best coach we've ever had at Texas Tech, and then bring in this dude. Are you, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? The most successful NFL coach of all time. You know, that was a Texas Tech head coach. That was a Texas Tech head coach. We just get rid of him. Guy yeah. that brings in, you know, the Super Bowl MVP, the greatest what about quarterback. Anthony in the... Lynn with the Chargers? He he made some quite a bit of noise the past few years. Look a little yeah, tired there. Yeah, but five and two. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just still smoking hot. Oh yeah, great guy. What an offense. You know, he wakes up uh, at three in the morning, hits the gym before the players get there. Just an absolute stud. I mean, what well, else can you ask for in a coach? You can't. You can't ask sure for check, much. Make sure to check out Chris Moss on the Cliff Kingsbury podcast. Airs Mondays at 7 p.m. Only on <laughs> OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> www.onlyfans.com backslash Chris and Cliff. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. Uh, but, I mean, all right. So, that that's really all there is for a Big 12 slate this week. There's not too much going on. Um when you know, basketball we have start? the Big Ten back. Basketball, ooh, basketball. November I saw a preseason 25th. ranking of, like, number 11. Dude, some of them have no respect on our name and putting us down at, like, 17. I, I just need to get that bet in before Mac McClun becomes eligible. Uh, I mean, McClung's going to play. Uh, uh, I, I think so. I uh, mean, Georgetown, uh, they had a bunch of transfers out. He's going to play. So, Ryan, uh, yeah. and Tom Way. UNLV, UNLV, every single transfer got approved, but in Tom Way. Yeah, but I mean, that, I feel like that there has to be more to that story that we so, don't know so about. So, this is what Evan and I were talking about last time. Why do you think that Mac McClung is basically being held until the end of the waiver cycle or whatever to be deemed eligible or not? Like, why are they dragging this out? COVID. Hype? I think it might be hype. Uh, I, still, I, I don't still think, think there's enough hype man. around McClung to shut him down from playing. And why would they try to shut down someone with hype? That's just I good still think it's basketball. chronological. That makes the most sense. I yeah. think they're just trying to like keep the mentions on Twitter, all the activity around him high, so that when he does become eligible, that it's a big news story. Well, I think chronological makes a little more sense. All right. But I like, I like your theory. I don't hate it. Um, but you know what I was doing yesterday? What? Is for like the twentieth time mm. watching Micah PV and Namari Burnett highlight videos, and it's wicked fun. It's oh, yeah. gonna be, be so good. 
What's, they're going to be so good. What Evan, did they release the schedule yet, or are you still talking about that tournament that's just not going to happen? They released the Big 12 schedule. But Is the... that tournament going to happen or not? Yeah, it's scheduled. Totally, for... yeah. You think, I just don't see that happen, but whatever. There's a bunch of tournaments scheduled, not just this one. The same early season ones, they, kind of, they have them scheduled. Yeah. So, I mean, I we, we have our, I mean, our first home game is November the 25th. There you go. Exciting. Right right soon, boys. One month away. And then we're going to have right. two seasons going. But for now, we are going to focus on football. Let's go get a big-time dub against the evil Sooners hmm. and take care of business. All right. Well, I'm Ryan. I'm Chris. And I'm Evan. And this has been the Raider Power Podcast. Guns up, fellas. Guns up. Guns up, baby.